try and continue this dominant streak they've had. We're waiting on the character select between the two. And right into it, our first game five of set, our first game, best of five of the night, Omega and Spickles on the Georgia Classic of PS2. Part of this is going to be how can Spickles manage to control the stage, look to push and almost maintain what they have been doing throughout the course of the night. Landing a good, landing a good up smash out of seal, but right now, you can't go for some of these options too many times in a row. Players like Omega will eventually start to take that information and start pushing their advantage onto you. And Spickles looking for these confirmed so consistent. Doing a good job of extending, but Arsene online. And we saw it in the last set when Omega does get Arsene, they're able to consistently extend their advantage and find ways to punish consistently. So Omega still looking for this back air. And again, constantly punishing within the corner. And we have a newcomer onto the mic. Uh, Hi. All right. I'm the biggest Salvador fan. Excellent. So, one thing we mentioned earlier in the set with Omega and Kalen was that he was very good at finding consistent punishes, but Spiggle's doing a good job of getting these up smash reads throughout the course of this set. And Omega almost not adapting to that behavior. Yeah, I mean, we saw a lot of adaptation coming out from Spickles during his sets against Sakana and against Jazo. Uh, he was really going crazy, just like reading all of their options at the end of those sets. No, it's doing a good job of definitely finding some of these reads, but unfortunately falling to the RSN fair, but we haven't seen much use of the Tornado yet this set coming out from Spickles. But as oh, I say right that- Oh, right, commentator's curse. Wow, yeah. a whole stock up. But yeah, what, it doesn't mean too much, unfortunately, against Omega, a player who is so good at capitalizing and ex creating an explosive lead. Yeah, exactly. He's so consistent at just like bringing stuff like this right back to just like a neutral, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Omega doing a good job of right now, just kind of weaving around stage control and forcing Spickles to move in and go around some of these zones. But the Arsene online is now up to Spickles, like we've been telling him, play the clock and make sure you're burning that Arsene. Yeah, right now Omega's just playing the game, taking out this stock as soon as he can. I think this is going to be it. Yeah, Arsene back there, taking it right there. Well, unfortunately, Luigi having a little bit more of a telegraph recovery in this scenario. And when the Arsene is online, it's all about trying to mitigate your damage control. But it it's oh, no, not, quite. not just yet a premature pop off coming from Spickle. The Cyclone not closing out just yet. But now Omega starting to respect that shield option with the up smash coming out, looking for just kind of just space around that shield and try and rack up this early damage onto Spickles. That was a great call out with a grab right there from Omega. I mean, look, trying to get the ledge trump off for Spickles. That, that can be it? it? The Cyclone will not do it just yet, and Arsene threatened. Oh, that's... Yeah. Un yep. un that is the closure of the stock for Spickles. Omega falls to Spickles. But... Omega just immediately going for the sing hand single, running it back, trying to find a way to slow down the momentum that Spickles has been able to find tonight with good wins on players such as Donye, taking out Jazo, taking out Sakana. It's all up to Spickles to carry this momentum into game two. And similar to what we've seen last time, Spickles was trying to look and push in, create some pressure, but now Omega playing a little more reserved, looking for that stage control game, and trying to set up any advantage state they can. Yeah, I mean, I think right now what Omega needs to work on for the last game is just making sure he gets more punishes off those uh, Arsens. Because he would get Arsene and not necessarily get a kill off it, but he really needs to be getting those kills there. Doesn't get Arsene too often. Yeah, I, I can definitely understand that the Arsene, you know, wasn't necessarily a star of the show the last game. I, it is imperative that Omega does get these early closures out on stock, just consistently resetting off stage. But a 
Omega now finding a little more confidence, looking for some of these consistent throw confirms, racking up 53% and laughing. Wow. And now you have to be worried because the Arsene, like we've been saying over the course of the night, right there in terms of pressure, Omega doing a good job and weaving around the active threat bubble that Spickles is presenting. Yeah, and I mean, this is exactly where Omega wants to be. He's about to get Arsene again. He's going to take out another stock even before, maybe. Yeah, and we can see that Omega is just playing this in such a calculated manner right now, not trying to go for too many aggressive options, basically spacing around the shield of Spickles. The Arsene is online, so now that back air even more of a threat than before. A good cover of the up air from Spickles to try basically cancel out the Aegon, but not too not yeah, enough. Like you said, all Luigi really has for recovery options is that side B and the up B. So it's really tough against Arsene back air right there. I mean, He's when you look at how Omega has been playing this, the Arsene may be offline. They're trying to carry this advantage A of waiting outside of the threat radius of Luigi, get a simple chip shot in, and then we can extend it into that advantage. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to even get hit by a stray hit from Luigi, because just about anything can convert into like a 50-80% combo right there. But another point that I do want to hammer home right now, it's a three stock in favor of Omega. You know, what was a close game one, and whoa! <laughs> Misfire takes out the stock for Spickles. So now, two on the board for Omega. There, it, It's not impossible to come back from this hill. A low percent grab can do anything. Trying to wall out with the back airs right now. Omega doing a good job of just establishing, establishing this ledge presence. And here we go again at the ledge. Can Spickles make it oh. back? And the footstool sends the message. Omega soundly taking game number two. Man, it always, like, if I lose to a footstool, I'm heartbroken right there, you know? So he must be going into this game three really, really, you know, like, he's fighting for his life now. Yeah, I mean, you do have to be a little bit more careful of some of your options when you are playing against a Luigi. The theme of the night so far has been the counter pick from Spickles has almost generally always been going to small battlefield. There must be some tech that Spickles has, or maybe some level of comfort that he has on a smaller stage like small battlefield to try and extend their advantage state. But yeah, I think a big part right here is just that it's a lot smaller, so it's going to force Omega to play a lot faster. Whereas he was really succeeding when he was taking the game a lot slower and just forcing Sal to come to him, Spiggles to come to him. I, yeah, I mean, I think one thing that has changed between game one and two was the spacing. We saw it throughout the course of this game, but Spiggles already off to the races with these combo extensions. Right off the bat! A stock, yeah, taking the stock out early. Right now, Spiggles is trying to continue the momentum, using the cycle to break through. Omega has to find some way to close out at the ledge. What a stark difference from last game. In last game, it was Omega taking out the stock right off of that. Now it's Sal, Spiggles. Well, yeah, I mean, when you look at how Spiggles is playing this matchup right now, it's pretty good to see that they're able to just play a safer neutral right now. We know Omega is going to try and cramp, but can't get hit with the down, the down air up, up smash, even if you are just barely living. We talked about this earlier that the timer is your friend against Arsene, but with Arsene, Ar Omega does have a little bit more freedom to try and challenge some of the more linear recovery from Luigi. And right now, Spickle's number one priority, getting back to that center stage. Exactly, that was an interesting option right there. Yeah, it was interesting to go for the Cyclone. You know, you're losing your intangibility at that point, and yeah. basically, Telegraphing to Omega a way for him to punish you, but now air dodging out. Spickles looking for a way to seal out stock number two. 114. And I don't know if I'm in, in agreement with going off stage like that. Spickles has to be careful when they're looking for some way to try and carry through. Yeah, I think he got a little overconfident and just started overextending right there. <laughs> yeah, I, right now, Omega getting their consistent confirms. The drag down into the throw confirms. 
Again, Omega at high percents, and Arsene online. And Spiggles, the same story we've seen last game, unfortunately losing his stock early on, but. I'm just very doable for either player right here. I mean, I can, it, it is absolutely doable for either player, but. Spiggles just needs to take out Arsene right now. Yeah, it, it is hard when this timer is on the board, but right is that now, be it? Omega Ooh, with double spine. healing the stock with a flourish. So now, the small battlefield counterfeit has finally broken down. Spickles is not as not unshakable on small battlefield as we thought. You know, taking out Jaws or taking out Donye on this stage, but Omega looking to end this right now. Game. Oh, excuse me, game, four. game four. Yeah, game four. I was just uh, had a brain for it, but uh, Omega trying to send Spickles down to the loser side and secure their place in grands. Oh, back to small battlefield. Well, yeah, it, it was an interesting choice from Spickles. They have been very successful on this map throughout the course of the night, but don't know if that's the best choice right now, especially with Omega playing so hot, covering all these options, and the misfire saving Spickles' life and reclaiming stage position. Yeah, that was a perfect thing to needed right there. Yeah, a very, you know, a very well-timed option coming in from Spickles, but not enough just yet. Omega has been suffocating him in this disadvantage state, and Omega's stage control, blending into his good option coverage, has been nothing but a nightmare for Spickles. 10% only on the board. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to why he went back here. I mean, other than that first stock with the zero to death, he didn't really get much from having it on small battlefield except some other stage. Well, you know, there must be something specific that Spickles is like about the stage. Omega does seal out the stock, low percents on the, on the third stock, and now consistently getting these combos, racking up high pressure. Spickles barely recovering there, but now, Trying to force these offstage interactions that we know. An unfortunate misinput from Spickles. Low percent. Three stocks on the board for Omega. Omega's been here before, and this is time where they look to close out. Again, these Cyclones running off the stage are just not going to cover enough for Spickles. Omega has been so good at consistently looking for reversals. The this is the kill confirmed. Yeah, the up not connecting in time, but not enough just yet. The up air next. Omega now trying to close out this stock. A very, grab the mid percent. Arsene still on the board. Oh. And just whiffing the dare. Spickles does end Omega's stock, but it might be too little too late. Two minutes off the board. Omega just whiffing there. Confirmed. And unfortunately, Spick no, oh. still living the trump. Spickles has a chance to reclaim, get back to stage. I'll be through. Not enough just yet. Gotta get out of the corner in Spickles, but Omega never misses those confirms. Closes out three to one. Yeah, I think right there the key was consistency over sporadic victories right there. Well, it, when you play a character, uh, not a character, a player like Omega, you're able to see how consistently they're able to bring up their confirm. They're able to see how well they can basically extend their advantage, try and find their confirm. When they're up in a set like this, they don't have to take much in terms of risk. Spickle's just confirming that they are in losers finals and have to play Spickle. We're gonna take a quick six minute break. We'll see you guys as this bracket advances. Stay tuned.